Welcome everybody to Funeral Nation episode 236. That is Jeff the Funeral Commander Harbison. I'm Ryan Thog Martin, and we have a guest, and it's Thanksgiving. It is a big Thanksgiving, and I am actually back in West By God, Virginia. Uh, what do we call that? Wild and wonderful, wild, correct? Yes, sir. Wild and wonderful. This is Rob Kimes. Rob, introduce yourself and what you do here. I'm Rob Kimes. That I'm the executive director of the West Virginia Funeral Directors and Crematory Operators Association. Right, and Rob is also a licensed funeral director uh, in the state of West Virginia and North Carolina. All righty, and he is also a veteran. So uh, yes. thank you for your service. Yes, thank, thank you, sir. So I'm up here uh, visiting and working this week. Uh, we're actually recording it. Hey, Jamie. <laughs> um, but we're meeting with uh, CNJ and for the association here and how we can bring some things to them to help their members enhance uh, the lives of families and help them to be uh, not only get paid, but also most important, so the family feels good about what they uh, what they chose and they don't get financially knocked out of the park. Uh, we were talking a little bit earlier and West Virginia, a lot of people didn't know, but you had an interesting situation for COVID. Yeah, with our COVID situation, when it first hit, that uh, the funeral directors in our state weren't listed as a tier one. So we had to do a lot of uh, you know maneuvering as an association behind the scenes to get our funeral directors to be able to fall into the category to be vaccinated. And you can really not think of any other uh, group <laughs> that is not only dealing with the the host who has the COVID, but also the families that have been there in touch with all the, the COVID, uh, you know, related, you know, visitations of, of the patient and everything. So we uh, had to do a lot of back doors uh, to get to us, but we were into a, um, finally got into a tier one situation and were able to uh, attain the vaccinations for beginning with a 50 and older crew. Gotcha. And then uh, as it went along, we were able to get it for all funeral directors. It's interesting, too, because West Virginia, I, if I remember correctly, was the holdout state that didn't have a case of COVID for like everybody else was going crazy. Right. And West Virginia is like, nope, we don't have it. Nope, we don't have it. Finally, the first case came. And then, of course, the waterfall fell well, after that. If you don't report it, you don't have it. So it's, right. it's, it's straightforward. No, and um, so I think the numbers were a little skewed, and, and uh, sometimes that happens when you're either trying to sway it one way or the other. But um, I think the last that we reported was around seventy percent reality. It was I think it's a, a good bit less. Uh, West Virginia does have a, a large um, population that is anti-vaccination. Uh, yeah. And, you know, obviously they get through that. It's, it's a different density in the state. So, you know, some I can respect that because if you're only around a certain amount of people don't have it, there's no reason to, to mess with it. Rob and I also have a interesting story because I came out here about five years ago and uh, I landed at Jaeger Airport and my, my plane was late and uh, Jaeger Airport rental, everything shuts down at five o'clock. Right. You wow. didn't send that in the memo. Right. <laughs> so I come strolling in there about six o'clock, you know, get my golf bag. And of course, I'm dressed like me right here. And so I was, I, I went to counter strike, strike one. There you go. And so uh, I go up to the rental counter and there's just a phone, nobody around. So I called the guy. No, we closed at five. I said, well, I got a car. Well, I don't know what you're going to do. And so I was headed south about an hour. Right. Mm -hmm. And so literally um, it was me and a security guard and some other guys standing out there at literally on the sidewalk. They shut the air is closed. And I'm outside again, being me. And this family comes up and they said, well, um, can we help you with something? I said, well, yes, but I got to get down to Beckley and um, there is no Uber and well, we'll take you. And I thought, you know what, sweet people, the difference is I'm sitting in the back seat. <laughs> yeah, he reminded me of that little boy off uh, Andy Griffiths where he kept handing me like a sandwich, you know, and he just kind of <laughs> staring at me and I'm staring at him. But anyway, that's how welcoming and wonderful folks are here in West Virginia. And of course, ultimately, um, I, I got married to a woman from West Virginia and hey, you know, she's out here and it's a wonderful place. And interesting, this organization, too, is really well run. Uh, you guys have your own trust. We do. Mm -hmm. We have our own pre funeral trust. And we've been able to double that. And we've had great returns. Uh, we've probably averaged about 6% uh, over the last five years. 
uh, I think it was Trump's final year, we made about 12%. And it's a very conservative trust. Um, and it's uh, here we're in a state where no fund, excess funds are retained by the funeral home. They have to be returned to the family. So there's no real reason to be risky in your investments there. But uh, we've had uh, great success with that. Um, uh, our legislatively, we're strong educating our funeral directors were strong. So in the last 10 years, we've, uh, you know, also increased our membership by about 30, 35% of the funeral homes. And so when you get to a certain point, you have, let's say 80% of the, the funeral homes in the state, and then there's that 10% that you don't want because they're going to end up on 2020 uh, episode. And then you have the other 10% that want the milk, but don't want to pay any part of the cow. So um, we like to show the value and some of that, like I mentioned, behind the scenes stuff that they don't see, whether it's lobbying or whatever, but it's e something that's easy to see is the trust or the education uh, opportunities that we provide. Excellent. I have awesome. to tell you, Brian, I, uh, if you'll throw this up here, uh, Tyree Funeral Home in my wife's hometown of Oak Hill, West Virginia, has the number one funeral home sign I've ever seen in my life. Yes, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Four bears carrying a casket. Um my wife actually made the great observation that they're paw bearers. They are. That's pretty funny. Paw bearers. It's pretty so funny. anyway, uh, y'all take a look at that. If anybody can beat this sign, I want to see it, but I think it's going to be hard pressed to do so. Yeah. We're going to throw so, those pictures up. Yeah. So go. Ryan, uh, y'all are hanging out. Uh, you've got a few folks at your house this coming got week. My wife's entire family at our house for about eight days, 10 days, something like that. So we're, we're living up Thanksgiving. All righty, good for you. And I'm uh, I'm in Kincaid, West Virginia, which is ten miles out of Oak Hill, and uh, it's beautiful down here. So uh, it's a blessing to hang out with family awesome. and friends. But anyway, yes. Rob, thanks for coming on with us. Thanks for having me. And uh, I'll be back down over here a lot, but uh, certainly tangled up with these guys. But uh, Ryan, y'all have a good Thanksgiving, and uh, everybody yeah, else, the FNers, the same thing. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Out here.